exciting talents of the late 2010s. And to be honest, he was out of favor of many clubs in Europe and many managers in Europe. So the question still remains, what happened to Emory Moore? Moore was born July 24th, 1997 to his mother, Uzeli, and his father, Uzeli. Growing up in Copenhagen, Denmark, he was pretty talented. He even got a little bit of an academy start at a team I can't pronounce. But 2001, 2006, in 2006, 2015, he was at Lingby, where he was sought after, but was released because of attitude issues and commitment issues, which I'll get to later on in the video. In December 2013, where he got a trial at 16 years old to set Etienne in France at the time, he didn't get the trial, or say, he didn't get the contract, and uh, it didn't work out. Years later, he got his big break at FC Neuschland, where um, he was pretty talented and was sought after because of one thing and one thing. Technical ability. His dribbling skills was thing of magic. You could say he's compared to Messi, even Hazard, or even you could say Ronaldinho, even though he doesn't really have that level of talent, I guess. But his left foot and his technical ability is the main reason why he was compared to Messi. He was called the Turkish Messi, which, as that title has been thrown around for the past decade or so. He had 13 appearances and two goals and two assists, which, at 18 years old, that's nothing to write home about. But at least it's a start. So, later on, 2016. Dortmund days, where June 7th, 2016, where 12 million euros was paid for the 18 year old. And, um, you know, everyone thought he was going to be a star because he's going to a team that knows how to nurture young talent. And which young talent at the time, he joined a core of Usman Dembele, Christian Pulisic, Jaden Sancho, Sancho, later on, Alexander Izak, and also later on, Sergio Gomez. A pretty promising watch around of him going against Real Madrid in 2016, where it was a two all draw. And of course, he had a little chat with Cristiano Ronaldo, in which that's one of his idols. Um, it wasn't really right in the right home enough, even though he came from the bench. But considering that his attitude problems were a thing of the past, it's not. After a game versus Bayern, and it was a training session. Thomas Tuchel, the coach at the time, was having some issues with Emre's attitude and commitment in training. In which, which incident in training order was protesting to not basically work harder in training. Later on, he was sold after one season with Borussia Dortmund at just basically 20, 19 years old, and was sold later on to a certain Spanish side in the lower depths of Spain. La Vigo was not necessarily a big team. They have some good players like Iñago Aspas or Hugo Mayo. I'm in August 2017, he was signed, and uh, he's the second most expensive player in their history. And basically, he had some talent. Yes, he was taking a lot of players when he won. But it's nothing to say he's the next Messi. He was labeled a flop, a failure. And his attitude problems came even more the next season. In which he barely even got any game time. In general, being at Santa Vigo, the coach at the time, Juan Carlos Unze, stated, end quote, Emory has to understand technical skill is not enough to give him more playing time. There are no miracles or coincidences. Mentally, he needs to change, end quote. So there's a new manager in town, Juan Carlos is gone, and there's Miguel Cardoso, in which he didn't even have Emre in his plans either. So then the board didn't have him in the plans either. So the board and the manager themselves decided to finally loan him out. And July 31st, 2019, to Fenerbahce. Nothing to write home about, really. He 
played in the Champions League, I guess. And uh, I guess <laughs> it, it's nothing to write home about because he only got 12 appearances in one goal. So that didn't work. Went to Olympiacos. Waste of time. Literally zero goals, zero games, zero assists. Nothing. Then, in August 2021, he got a loan move to Flaith Katarunk. If I butchered that, I'm sorry. He, he got a loan move and uh, kind of sparked a little of a love story there since he's going back to his father's country. And um, it seems like maybe it could work since Galatasaray didn't work. And maybe Faith would. Went on loan and then finally, finally, after all these years of staying at Santa Vigo, he is now gone. He is no longer on the payroll. He is now getting paid by Fenerbahce, in which uh, he's played with Moussa Dozil and, uh, and Arda Guler, which is, he's, it's kind of ironic because uh, he's kind of becoming the next Emory Moore. <laughs> to be quite real, he's not really getting that much game time at Real Madrid. Would expect a 17 year old to really get that much game time right on my day, but only time will tell. But anyway, Emre Moore at Fenerbahce was nothing to write home about either. Um, it, it's, it's just attitude problems and everything else has still been a factor in which he's on loan at Faith again, where he still plays till this day. Many, many talents before and after Emre have been subject of having poor performances and not performing well. There's many factors, but in his case, it's more of commitment and attitude towards the game of football. Has really stagnated his career at the age of 26. He has some years left, yes, but um, it, it's not really looking too good for the next Messi. Um, his national team efforts aren't really anything to write home about either. He did, I guess, okay in the 2016 Euros of Turkey. But talent is not going to close to the rest of So I had to learn that the hard way as well as a footballer. And it, it confidence and, and cockiness is different. And your attitude has to change if you want to be successful. But that's it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Video. Please leave a like, subscribe, and uh, see you guys in the next one.